the health watch, one thing I like about the health watch is that, see those big eyes, they're actually watching all of us to see what we're doing. So the title is Prevent Epidemic. And how do you prevent epidemic by immunizing? If you look at the picture on that side, if only some of us are vaccinated, look at the ones that are vaccinated, the guy in red is the danger. So the yellows are few. Because they are few, when the red man comes in there, it's going to affect all the other people in blue. Look at the one on, the other, on this side. If most of us get vaccinated, if it all becomes yellow, you know, that red man can only affect one or two, or only one person. That's how you prevent epidemic, by getting most of the people vaccinated. So even if the disease is still around, you're not going to get epidemic. One, two people will get. But when most of us are not, and that's why we have that one. And one other thing you need to remember, if you stop vaccinating, more people are born, even in that group, in the group that they are well protected. More children are born every year. I think Nigeria has about five, seven million children every year. Imagine if you only vaccinate 80% of them, 20% of 5 million, I don't know what that is, multiply that over the next four or five years, you have millions of people who are not protected. So we must continue to vaccinate for, as, as we get the children. As you make them, you must vaccinate them. There are 26 available vaccines now, according to WHO, and there are under 24 in the pipeline of different diseases. You can pick out the ones. The ones that are put in red uh, are some of the ones that sometimes we do use in Nigeria, sometimes we, some privately, some not. But none of the ones that, that are below that are actually being used here. Uh, we don't have, one would have thought that Nigeria will, will be looking into Lassa fever, but we're not. It's our problem. But of course, we wait for the expertise to come and solve the problem. For us. So, immunization is the first line of defense against any infectious disease. Once you, if you, I always say one thing, if you vaccinate everybody in Nigeria, it's possible. You can bring all the mosquitoes in Nigeria carrying yellow fever. Wasted effort. Because we're already protected. So we put it up, we'll be infected, but we'll not get the disease. That's what it means. They said, in fact, somebody said the only thing that is better than vaccine right now is clean water. And you know, we have clean water in Nigeria. So... WHO has said at least 26 diseases. But despite the existence of these vaccines, you know, we still find that only 21% of the children within the age of 12 to 30 in Nigeria are vaccinated against vaccine preventable diseases. Just like Adelby said, we have a lot of work to do. 21% from 100 is quite a lot. If you score 21%, you won't pass jump. So remember that one. Four to five, four to five, to five million Nigerian children are still, as of maybe 2017, are immunized. So I'm asking this question. Can Nigeria prevent epidemics through immunization? Before you answer, listen to me or before you listen. Can we learn from our history? Or will our history repeat itself? Those are important questions I think you need to know. 1989, that was a paper in The Guardian. Doctors alarmed as immunized children fall prey to conquer diseases. It was a talk, I uh, don't you know that uh, Professor Gill would remember, it was a talk given at the Ministry of uh, Health in those days when it was at Oniko. And you know, the talk was that we were saying we're getting 100% coverage, 200% coverage. And our children were still dying of the same thing that we were vaccinating them against. Something was wrong somewhere. Either we're not vaccinating them properly or we are cooking up our figures. Well, which was more likely, we probably were cooking up figures. 1994, again, immunization. So that was five years later, we're still talking about reviving and revitalizing immunization in the country. I'm going to talk a little about polio. And the question I was asking then, would Nigeria be the last country to eradicate polio? I was so confident that my country won't be the last. But I was disappointed. Because actually in Africa, we're actually the last. Every African country has been free, declared free of polio, except Nigeria. So when people start telling you in the papers, you count down to this thing, is a lie. The truth is that we are still a polio endemic country. And if you ask me when we're going to eradicate polio, forget it. I cannot tell you because until we get access to Sambisa Forest and know who is there, who has been vaccinated, you cannot say when Nigeria will eradicate polio. Ten years later, I, I want to talk and talk about I was still so confident Nigeria polio eradication risk. Nigeria will not be the last. You know when you are when you love your country. But the truth sometimes puts light to your love, you know, but that's what happened to us. You see that Nigeria crawling, when everybody's running to the race, we are crawling with lame leg, carrying Nigeria. And that one. If you quickly look at the right side, all these graphs are showing the number of polio cases we've had over the years, and what and what has been responsible for are not succeeding. 
so that immunization is not only about vaccine. It involves other things. If you look at the year, sometimes when you see the red, the green arrows showing the time when we have a national election, a year or so after that one, cases of polio will rise up. Because the money we shall use for vaccination, we use it for campaign and a few other things. So the next year, you can be sure that polio will rise up. There was one particular year where at least there were three polio cases in Nigeria every day. Nigerian child had, I mean, three Nigerian children, uh, child, children had polio every day in this country. That was in 2006. We thought we were going to end the, you can see the figure going down. Then Boko Haram came. You can see that we actually have gone down, but the reason why we're not doing what we should do is because we can't access the last part of the country where we have it. If you go to the top in 2003, you see something about a uh, vaccine boycott. Those of you who were around then, and see what followed after the boycott. The cases of polio just went up. People not boycotting polio because we're investing so much money into, into corruption. Our children are out of school, but their people are under-vaccinated. We became the cap poverty capital of the world. From monkeypox to yellow fever to Lassa fever to cholera to CSM to measles, at least one, two, three, four of them have vaccines. Why are we having? Look at those red figures. We're looking in Nigeria talks in thousands of people, and each thousand we're talking about are individuals, people. Until every child is free, we cannot begin to clap in this country, no matter the progress that we're making. Those red figures tell us what our problems are. Can Nigeria fully immunize all our children? So let us see where we're coming from. Nigeria is the country with the highest number of, we, we talked about that. We are the home to the deepest inequalities between geographic, as you saw, part of the, I think, uh, Adel will mentioned that. Lagos State has 80% coverage. Sokoto State has 3% uh, coverage. But then Lagos State should not jump up. Because the 20% of the children in Lagos that don't have vaccination are more than the children in another state where the population is low. So we talk of numbers, we look at percentages, we jump up. But the, the place like Lagos that has 20% of them is more than 80% in some other states. So don't look at those crazy figures. The important is the number of children that are not vaccinated. So between the 73% in coverage between the lowest part and more. Next slide. Nigeria is also the country in which the EFCC has recovered from complete... This is not my figure. It's on their website. You go and look at it. 749 billion naira, this and that. All that came to about 97 billion naira. Plus hundreds of properties, filling stations, houses, all those houses you see on the road in Abuja. Some not occupied, some of these things. They are under the FCC, whatever. But they use your money to build those ones. Add to the fact that 100 and, are there any senators here? I hope you are not. 109 senators are receiving 13.5 million naira allowance per month, allowance per month, amounting to 17 billion naira in a year. Next slide. So I ask the question, let's do some more arithmetic. It costs about 17,000 naira to fully vaccinate a child in Nigeria. If we take 1% of the looted money recovered by EFCC, we will fully vaccinate 10,000 Nigerian children. If we take, if our senators will give us just one, that one year, instead of the four years, that of the allowance, we will vaccinate over 1 million Nigerian children. Next slide. So does Nigeria have enough money to fully vaccinate all our children? The answer, of course, is yes. Next one. Now, there are two things. Does Nigeria have the resources to fully immunize all our children? There's a difference between money to vaccinate and resources to immunize. I think it's important for us to separate between vaccination. It's not every child that is vaccinated that is immunized for different reasons. You can give him an impotent vaccine. The thing has been cold chain has killed the vaccine. What is kind of thing? The child itself has its own problem. So the fact that you vaccinate the child doesn't mean that that child is immunized. So bear that in mind. But do we have money to vaccinate? I think we have more than enough. Do we have the resources to immunize? Money alone may not be all the vaccines, may buy all the vaccines that we need, but we need more than money to immunize our children. We need all, and we need each of us, our parents, our health workers, political leaders, everybody, community, to get involved in this. And we see how with that, so that we announce all these resources together. The talent that you have, and Nigeria is talented, the skills, the ability, the position and the power that many of our people hold to do this. When you had the first lady of a, of a state, 
She's coming out to say something. It makes a difference. So, our success depends on raising awareness about the importance of fully minimizing our children, demonstrating the value of vaccines. I, I copied this one. This is not my word, you know, from the, this. Thing. Building on immunization progress and showing how routine immunization is the foundation for effectiveness. The health security we are talking about, of the future of this country, depends on vaccinating the ones that are born now. So, celebrating heroes. We must have champions amongst us. We must have people who will go out there and talk about vaccination. We talk about the importance of vaccination. And any of you, I'm sure you are championing other things, whatever it is you are doing. Add vaccination to, your, to, your, to things you are championing. Become a hero you know, to let people know. In any community where you are, in any aspect where you are, amongst any group of people, ensure that they know about vaccination. Vaccination needs champions. So to demonstrate the value, to highlight the need of, uh, the, and to show that the foundation of strong health. Nigeria has all it takes. We have all it takes to immunize our children. But a few take what we have. And that's where the problem is. Leaving the poor family like that woman, four children, all on one bicycle. That is in Nigeria. But compare this picture to what you see in Abuja. That money we have can make sure that this woman will get all her children vaccinated. Colleagues, if it's in your hand, it's in my hand. And we can never stop talking. Thank you very much. Thank you.